How many of you think you're change agents? Raise your hand. How many of you want to make a difference? Now, I was raised to believe that I would use my talent, my ability, my privilege, whatever I had to make a difference for other people, to use that as the rent that we all pay for living on this planet. And, uh, you know, I've, I've been in this community for a number of years. Uh, I've been uh, a county administrator, a school administrator. I've uh, been the uh, deputy director of the Civil Rights Department in the place you're sitting. I was the director of planning and development here in this county that you're sitting in. And it, through all those experiences, I've seen some common dilemmas uh, that we have uh, as human beings. Now, I'm not here to talk about the statistics because the statistics I think you all know. And the statistics are not going to move us to where we need to be as a community, as a society, as a place that we, everybody feels inclu included and welcome. But I am here to talk about how do we change. Now, Mark Twain once said that the only person he ever met that liked change was a baby with a wet diaper. Now, all of you change agents, it's all great when change is happening to somebody else, but when it starts happening to you, you have to start having second thoughts, don't you? When change happened to you, you start thinking differently about change. Now, part of this is really about how do we think about each other in the change that we're in, and what do we have to do to be different within that? Now, I started working uh, some years ago to say, wow, uh, how can we start working to make a difference? I was out in a county, uh, Scott County, which is right outside of the Twin Cities here, it's third ring suburb, and I was probably the only African American for about 50 miles. And uh, I was the county administrator there, and uh, I had a, there was a conference at this, uh, this uh, convention center here on diversity and inclusion, and I asked uh, some of my staff, some of my senior staff, to go to the conference. And finally, one woman walked in, and she says, uh, you know, both of us turned off. She says, Gary, I am scared to go down to that conference. I really don't want to go down to this conference. This is a real story. And I was just blown away, right? Uh, this person had never really been out of their community much or never interacted on these issues of diversity. And I sat there, and I said, uh, and this person was a great person, good person, well-meaning person, you know, uh, et cetera. And I said to myself, well, what, what can I, what, how can I bridge this gap, right? And how do I, as the leader here, address some of these issues? Uh, one of the things that I, I saw was that that person had no relationships at all with other people that were different than them other than kind of in working relationships with them, they didn't really know anybody. And as I went around the county and I saw from city to city uh, people that knew of each other but didn't know each other, had an understanding of each other but didn't know where each other were coming from, I decided to pull something together called the Scott County Leadership Forum to pull together all these leaders to actually get to know each other. These leaders actually began to talk and understand each other, not having an agenda. The agenda was, what, how do we formulate a common agenda about what we want this community to be? And how do we interact with people that we don't know very well? Now, when you think about, oh, let me go back a step here. When you think about movements in this country, uh, you know, and we've had the women's movement, uh, we've had the civil rights movement, and recently we had the Wall Street movement, and now we have a movement around uh, gay marriage and people getting married to marry the partner or person that they love, uh, whoever that might be. But in each one of those movements, what it takes is for those communities that are involved to actually build relationships with each other before they can actually build relationships with others. So without that group having some type of social cohesion, like African Americans in the case of the Civil Rights Movement, women in the case of the women's movement, uh, gay and lesbian and, and transgender people in case of uh, the gay marriage movement, uh, the Wall Street movement, et cetera, without that social cohesion uh, in that group itself and understanding what it wants, it's hard to move the agenda forward. 
In addition, it's hard for that group to see others within their struggle, other allies that are going to support and help them uh, as a part of what they're doing unless they themselves have clarity about what they want to do and how they want to do that. And this is what they call collective impact, how we move together under a collective impact model so that we can move things forward. Now, in your workplaces, this is happening. In, in your communities, this is happening. And part of the reason that, uh, for example, in the African American community, there's such difficult disparities because there's no, there's very little social cohesion or has been since the civil rights movement has occurred. Now, let me talk about something here just for a minute. We pulled together something called the African American Leadership Forum in six cities across the country. And what we found was that there was a real yearning among African American leaders to define their own agenda, but there wasn't a forum for that to take place. There wasn't a communication for that to take place. And as they met and, and started creating their agenda, right here in the Twin Cities, we have 1,200 leaders from all over this community that have met together and started saying, here's what we want as a community. Here's how we want to move forward. Here's our responsibility to address the issues within our community. And here's what we need from others to make that happen. And we're starting now to see some movements in each one of these communities that is different than what has occurred before. This is a different step than what has occurred before. And this really uh, is related to uh, uh, the idea, the theory under this is game theory. And many of you might have uh, know who John Nash was uh, from his, uh, the movie called A Beautiful Mind. How many of you have seen that movie? So John Nash came up with a thing, uh, a, a mathematical formula called the Nash Equilibrium. He got a Nobel Prize for it. And what it says is that basically groups that don't have social cohesion that negotiate with other groups actually lose in every case. And that unless that group forms social cohesion, then when you're trying to negotiate something, the, the, the other group actually can go to different people within uh, that various communities and, and actually uh, not actually win the negotiation on every turn. Nash's work, along with this idea of targeted universalism, let me go back here. So let me give you this. Many times we confuse goals with strategies, right? So our goal is if in a community is we want all our children to do well, or if we're in this building, our goal could be we all want to get to the third floor. Different groups need different ways or different targeted strategies for us all to get there. So if our goal is everybody gets to the third floor and we have an escalator, that's one way to get to the third floor. Another way would be the stairs. But what if you're in a wheelchair? You're not going to take that escalator to get to the third floor. So you need targeted strategies for specific groups because we're not all situated to opportunity in the same way. So without social cohesion, without the ability for a group to have social cohesion within our community, we end up being fragmented. If we're going to move to a new level, we need to all see each other within the solution. We all need to get to the third floor. So let me give you something to put on your heads for a minute as you go into your, uh, your work today. How can we use the idea of social cohesion and collective action to make a difference within our groups, within our workplace? How can we use the idea of targeted universalism where we all agree on the goal, but we need to develop various different strategies for groups that are differently situated within our community? How can we do that? How do we ensure that everybody sees themselves in the picture? 